I was worn out when I arrived at the cabin. It had been a long week at work, and I really needed a break. The cabin was hidden deep in the woods, far from the nearest town. It was old, passed down through my family for generations, but I loved its charm. The first night was calm. I sat by the fireplace, enjoying the warmth and the quiet. The only sounds were the crackling fire and the wind rustling through the trees. I went to bed early, eager to enjoy my weekend. The next morning, I woke up to the sound of rain. It was pouring, pounding against the roof and windows. I decided to stay inside, read, and sip coffee. The storm didn't let up, and the sky was a dark, threatening gray. By late afternoon, the power went out. I wasn't too worried. The cabin had plenty of candles and lanterns. I lit a few and kept reading. As night fell, the storm grew stronger. The wind howled, and I could hear branches breaking outside. The cabin felt more lonely than ever. Suddenly, there was a loud thud against the side of the cabin. I jumped, my heart racing. I told myself it was just a branch blown loose by the storm. But then I heard it again, this time from the back of the cabin. The thuds kept coming, moving around the cabin, each one sending chills down my spine. I grabbed a flashlight and checked the windows. The rain made it hard to see, but I didn't spot anything unusual. The thudding stopped, and I tried to calm down. I reminded myself that I was alone out here. It was just the storm playing tricks on my mind. Later that night, I woke up to a strange noise. It was a faint scratching, coming from the front door. I froze, listening closely. The scratching grew louder, more insistent. I felt a knot of fear tighten in my stomach. I forced myself to get out of bed and walk to the door. The flashlight shook in my hand as I got closer. The scratching stopped suddenly, leaving an eerie silence. I opened the door a crack, shining the light outside. There was nothing there, just the rain pouring down. I closed the door and double-checked the locks. As I turned to go back to bed, I noticed muddy footprints on the wooden floor, leading from the door to the living room. My heart pounded in my chest. I hadn't left the cabin all day, and I hadn't walked through the mud. I followed the footprints cautiously, my breath coming in short gasps. They led to the window by the fireplace. I looked out but saw only darkness. Fear gripped me, and I decided I couldn't stay another night. I packed my things quickly, glancing over my shoulder every few seconds. As I stepped outside, the rain had finally stopped. The air was cold and fresh. I hurried to my car, my nerves still on edge. As I drove away, I glanced back at the cabin one last time. It stood there, silent and dark, with no sign of the strange events that had happened. The next morning, I called a friend to check the cabin with me. We found no footprints, no signs of anyone having been there. It seemed like the storm and my isolation had played tricks on my mind. I was relieved but decided it was best to leave the cabin alone for a while. Weeks later, I returned to the cabin with some friends for a weekend getaway. The place felt different with people around, less scary. We laughed and enjoyed ourselves, the strange night now just a distant memory. But late at night, as everyone else slept, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. In the quiet, I heard a faint scratching sound at the window. My heart raced as I lay there, staring into the darkness. I never told my friends about it. Some things are better left unsaid. I had been craving a break from the city. The constant noise, the rush, the never-ending stress, it was all getting to me. So, when I found an old cabin for rent deep in the woods, I jumped at the chance. The pictures online showed a cozy little place surrounded by trees with a small lake nearby. It looked perfect. I got there on a Friday afternoon. The drive was longer than I thought, with narrow roads twisting through thick forest. By the time I reached the cabin, the sun was setting, casting long shadows over the clearing. The cabin looked just like the pictures, old but charming, with a porch and a rocking chair out front. Inside, it was simple but comfortable. There was a small kitchen, 
a living room with an old fireplace, and a bedroom with a big window overlooking the woods. I unpacked my stuff, made a quick dinner, and settled into an armchair with a book. That night, I slept deeply, the kind of sleep that only comes when you're far away from your usual worries. But the next morning, I woke up feeling uneasy. It wasn't anything specific, just a feeling that something was off. I brushed it off as city nerves and decided to go for a hike to clear my head. The trail behind the cabin was overgrown but walkable. I walked for about an hour, enjoying the fresh air and the sound of birds. When I turned back, I noticed the cabin seemed smaller from a distance, almost blending into the trees. As the day went on, the uneasy feeling grew. I kept hearing noises, the creak of the floorboards, the rustle of leaves outside, a distant thump. I told myself it was just the sounds of an old house in the forest, but it didn't help. That evening, I built a fire and tried to relax. As the night grew darker, the noises became clearer. It sounded like footsteps outside, slow and steady. I got up and looked out the window but saw nothing. Just the trees, swaying a little in the breeze. I decided to go to bed early, hoping sleep would come quickly. But the noises continued, and now they seemed to be inside the house. The creak of the floorboards was closer, the thumps louder. I lay in bed, my heart racing, listening to every sound. Then I saw it. The front door was slightly open. I was sure I had locked it. I got up, my hands shaking, and closed it firmly. But as I turned back to the bedroom, I saw something that made my blood run cold. Muddy footprints led from the door to the kitchen. They weren't mine. I grabbed a kitchen knife and backed into the bedroom, locking the door. I called the police, whispering into the phone. They said it would take at least half an hour to get to me. I sat on the bed, gripping the knife, listening to the sounds of someone moving around outside the door. Minutes felt like hours. The footsteps outside my door were constant, and the doorknob jiggled once. I held my breath, hoping the lock would hold. Then, suddenly, there was silence. The only sound was my own heartbeat, loud in my ears. After what felt like forever, I heard sirens in the distance. I stayed locked in the bedroom until the police arrived. They found the door open, but no one inside. The footprints led back out into the forest, disappearing into the underbrush. The police couldn't find any sign of who it was. They suggested it was a drifter or someone looking for shelter. I didn't care. I packed my things and left the cabin that night, not stopping until I was back in the city. I never went back to that cabin. It took a long time for the fear to fade, but eventually it did. Now, when I need a break, I choose a place with more people around. The peace and quiet of the woods aren't worth the terror of feeling truly alone. Every now and then, I still have nightmares about that night. In them, I hear those footsteps outside my door, and I see the door slowly creak open. And in the shadows, there's always the shape of someone standing there, just watching. I decided to take a break from the busy city life. I found a small cabin in the woods online, far from the nearest town. It looked like the perfect spot for a quiet week away. The pictures made it look cozy, and I was ready for some peace and quiet. When I got there, the cabin was just like the pictures. It was a simple wooden cabin with a small porch and a chimney that hinted at a fireplace inside. The forest around it was thick with tall trees and a carpet of leaves. The air was fresh, and I felt calm as I unpacked my bags. The first night was uneventful. I made a simple dinner, read a book by the fire, and went to bed early. The quiet was a bit creepy at first, but I soon got used to it. It was nice to be away from the constant noise of the city. The next day, I decided to explore. I took a long walk through the woods, following a path that looped back to the cabin. It was a beautiful day, and I felt connected to nature in a way I hadn't in a long time. That evening, as the sun set, I noticed something strange. There were no sounds of animals. No birds, no rustling in the bushes, nothing. It was like the forest had gone completely silent. I shrugged it off, 
thinking maybe it was just in my head, and went inside to start a fire. Around midnight, I was woken up by a noise outside. It sounded like footsteps, slow and steady, crunching through the leaves. My heart started pounding. I told myself it was probably just an animal, but the footsteps sounded too heavy for that. I got out of bed and looked out the window. The moon was bright, casting long shadows across the ground. I couldn't see anything unusual. I listened carefully, but the footsteps had stopped. I told myself I was just being paranoid and went back to bed. The next night, the footsteps came again, but this time they were closer. I lay in bed, holding my breath, hoping they would go away. But they didn't. They circled the cabin slowly, almost like someone was checking the place out. I didn't dare move. Morning came, and I decided I couldn't take it anymore. I packed my things and decided to leave. As I was loading my car, I found something strange on the ground near the porch. It was a small, handmade doll, crudely made from twigs and string. It hadn't been there before. I felt a chill run down my spine. I quickly finished packing and drove away, my eyes darting to the rearview mirror the whole time. When I got back to the city, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease. I told a friend about my experience, and she suggested I look up the area online. I found out that the woods near the cabin had a dark history. People had gone missing there over the years, and some locals believed the forest was cursed. I didn't believe in ghosts, but something about the place felt wrong. In the end, I was just glad to be home, safe and sound. But the experience stayed with me. A few weeks later, I was going through my photos from the trip. As I zoomed in on a picture of the cabin, I noticed something in the background. There, among the trees, was a dark figure watching me. I felt a shiver run down my spine. I never went back to that cabin, and I still have nightmares about those footsteps and that dark figure. It was a reminder that some things are better left unexplored. Sometimes, the unknown is more terrifying than any ghost story. I was hiking alone in a thick forest on a cool fall afternoon. The sky was cloudy, letting in only a dim light through the dense trees. The air was cold, and the fallen leaves crunched under my feet as I walked deeper into the woods. It was supposed to be a short trip to clear my mind, but I had lost track of time and direction. As the hours passed, the forest became strangely quiet. There were no bird calls, no rustling of small animals just the sound of my breathing and the occasional snap of a twig under my boots. I started to feel uneasy. My phone had no signal, and the sun was beginning to set. The thought of spending the night in the forest alone made me feel scared. I began to walk faster, hoping to find the trail back, but the woods seemed to close in around me. Every tree looked the same, and the path I thought I was following had vanished. Panic began to set in as it got dark. I had no flashlight, only the weak light of my phone to guide me. The forest grew colder, and shadows got longer, creating strange shapes that played tricks on my eyes. My mind raced with the worst thoughts. I could hear my heartbeat pounding in my ears. The feeling of being watched was overwhelming, though I knew it was just my fear getting to me. After what felt like hours, I stumbled upon a small open space. In the middle of it stood an old, abandoned cabin. Relief washed over me. Maybe I could find shelter for the night. I approached carefully, the floorboards creaking under my weight as I stepped inside. The cabin was empty, except for a few broken pieces of furniture and a dusty old lantern. I lit it and felt a small bit of comfort in the warm glow it provided. As I settled in, I noticed a trail of fresh footprints leading away from the cabin into the woods. Curiosity fought with fear but the need to find help won. I followed the footprints, which were clearly made by someone in boots like mine. The trail was winding and hard to follow in the dark, but the faint light from the cabin behind me gave me some direction. Suddenly, I heard a distant sound of rushing water. Hope filled me. Water often meant people nearby. I walked faster, the sound growing louder with each step. Finally, 
I broke through the trees and found myself standing at the edge of a river. Across the river, I could see the faint lights of a small town. Relief and joy washed over me. I had made it out of the forest. I carefully crossed the river, the cold water biting at my legs, but I didn't care. I was safe. As I reached the other side, I turned back to look at the dark woods one last time, grateful that I had made it through. The townspeople were kind and helped me warm up and find my way home. I learned that the forest was known for its confusing paths, and many hikers had similar experiences. I vowed never to hike alone again, but I was grateful for the lesson learned and the strength I found within myself. Months later, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Even in the safety of my home, I sometimes felt eyes on me. One night, as I was lying in bed, I heard the faint sound of leaves crunching outside my window. My heart raced as I peered into the darkness, half expecting to see the same forest I had escaped from. But all I saw was my backyard. Yet as I turned away, I saw a muddy footprint on the floor by the door. A boot print, similar to mine. It was supposed to be a simple hike. I needed a break from the city, from work, from the endless noise. The forest seemed like the perfect escape. The trail was easy to see, wide and clear at the start. Sunlight streamed through the trees, making playful shadows on the ground. As I walked deeper, the path got narrower. The trees grew closer together, their branches forming a thick roof over me. Despite the summer heat, I felt a slight chill. I ignored it, thinking it was just the dense shade. An hour in, I realized I hadn't seen another person since I left the parking lot. The forest was strangely quiet. No birds, no rustling leaves. Just the sound of my own footsteps and breathing. I pulled out my phone to check the time, but there was no signal. I kept walking, hoping to find my way back to where I started. The trail seemed different now, less taken care of. Grass and weeds poked through the dirt, and the bushes became thicker. I told myself it was just my imagination that I hadn't left the path. But then I saw it, a torn piece of cloth hanging from a low branch. It looked old and dirty, like it had been there for a long time. My heart started to race. I looked around but saw no signs of anyone being here recently. Fear started to creep in. I walked faster, hoping to find my way back to familiar ground. The forest seemed to close in around me, the trees whispering in a way I couldn't understand. I stumbled over roots and rocks, my breath coming in short, sharp gasps. Then, in the distance, I saw a flicker of light. It was faint but real. Relief washed over me. I hurried toward it, my legs shaking with tiredness. As I got closer, I realized it was a clearing. Sunlight poured in, warm and inviting. I stepped into the clearing and took a deep breath. The air was fresh, the grass soft under my feet. In the center of the clearing was a small wooden signpost. It pointed in two directions, one marked trailhead and the other campground. With renewed energy, I followed the sign toward the trailhead. The path was clear and easy to follow. After what felt like forever, I emerged from the forest and found myself back at the parking lot. I collapsed against my car, the tension in my body slowly fading. I promised myself never to venture into the woods alone again. The forest, once a place of peace and quiet, now held a darkness I couldn't forget. But as I sat there catching my breath, I heard a distant sound, a whisper, like a voice carried on the wind, saying my name. I quickly looked around, but there was no one there. The parking lot was empty, just my car and the quiet forest. A chill ran down my spine as I realized that maybe I hadn't been alone in the forest after all. The darkness I had felt was still out there, watching, waiting. The sun had just set, and I found myself on a narrow path deep in the forest. I had taken this route many times before but something felt off tonight. The trees loomed overhead, 
their branches twisted like bony fingers against the darkening sky. The air was still and heavy as I kept walking. I had planned to be home by now, but I lost track of time while exploring a new trail. The daylight faded quicker than I expected, and now I had to find my way back in the dim twilight. My phone's battery was dead, so there was no light to guide me, just the faint glow of the moon sneaking through the thick branches. Every sound seemed louder. The crunch of leaves under my feet, the snap of a twig somewhere behind me, it all set my nerves on edge. I told myself it was just the usual sounds of the forest. Still, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. I started walking faster, hoping to reach the main trail before it got completely dark. As I moved, shadows danced at the edge of my vision, flickering in and out of sight. I tried to focus, but the path seemed to stretch on forever, each step taking me deeper into the unknown. Then I tripped. My foot caught on a root, and I fell hard onto the ground. Pain shot through my ankle as I scrambled to get up. At that moment, the forest seemed to close in around me, the trees pressing closer, their branches whispering secrets in the wind. Panic hit me. I forced myself to breathe slowly, to think. I needed to keep moving. Limping, I pushed forward, looking for any sign that I was on the right track. Time felt like it was dragging, each minute stretching into forever. Finally, I saw it, a faint light in the distance. Hope sparked inside me, and I hobbled toward it. As I got closer, I realized it was the main trail, lit by the moonlight breaking through the trees. Relief washed over me, and I quickened my pace despite the throbbing in my ankle. When I reached the trail, I stopped to catch my breath. The path ahead was clear, leading me out of the forest and back to safety. I took one last look behind me, half expecting to see something lurking in the shadows, but there was nothing. Just the silent, dark forest. With a deep breath, I kept walking, each step bringing me closer to home. The fear that had gripped me began to fade, replaced by a sense of relief. I had faced the forest and found my way out. As I emerged from the trees, the first light of dawn touched the horizon, painting the sky with shades of pink and gold. I knew I was safe. But as I turned to take one final look at the forest, I saw it, a pair of eyes, glowing faintly in the darkness, watching me. My blood ran cold. I hurried home, the eerie feeling that I wasn't alone lingering long after I shut my door. I had always loved camping, the peace of the forest, the crackle of the campfire, and the feeling of getting away from it all. One weekend, I decided to go to a remote spot I had read about online. It was supposed to be beautiful, with a clear lake and great trails. I packed my stuff and left early in the morning, excited for a weekend alone. The drive was long and took me deep into the woods. The road turned to dirt, and the trees closed in around me. I felt a thrill of excitement. I arrived at the campsite in the late afternoon, set up my tent quickly, and gathered some firewood. As evening came, I lit a fire and cooked a simple meal. The quiet of the forest was comforting, and I settled in for a peaceful night. But as the fire burned down to embers, I started to feel uneasy. The silence was too complete, too heavy. I shook it off, thinking it was just because the place was new to me. I crawled into my tent and tried to sleep. I woke up suddenly in the middle of the night. I lay still, listening. There was a rustling outside the tent. It was soft at first, almost like the wind, but it got louder. It wasn't the wind. My heart pounded as I strained to hear. The sound was definitely footsteps. I told myself it was an animal. But then I heard a low, rough voice. It was faint, like a whisper on the wind. I couldn't make out the words, but the tone was scary. My blood ran cold. No one was supposed to be out here. I was alone, miles from the nearest town. I stayed still, barely breathing. The footsteps circled my tent, slow and deliberate. The voice came and went, getting clearer then fading away. I was frozen with fear. I reached for my flashlight but stopped, scared the light would give me away. Minutes felt like hours. 
Eventually, the footsteps faded into the distance, and the forest fell silent again. I stayed awake the rest of the night, every sound making my fear worse. I waited for dawn, counting the minutes until the first light seeped through the tent. As soon as it was light enough to see, I packed up my gear quickly. My mind was racing with questions and fears. I needed to get out of there. The drive back felt longer than the drive-in. I kept checking my mirrors, half expecting to see someone following me. I reached home exhausted but relieved. The safety of my house had never felt so welcoming. I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched for days. I still don't know who or what was out there that night, but I learned to trust my instincts. A week later, I was still on edge. Then, one evening as I was closing the blinds, I saw something that made my heart stop. In the distance, just at the edge of my property, there was a figure standing in the shadows. It was the same low, rough voice I had heard that night in the woods, whispering my name. I haven't been camping since.